Hello, my friends, and good to see you in May. This is Oleg, your real estate broker with Winner Bellevue Commons. Today, this episode going to be my real estate market update for months of May, and I'm going to cover cities like Seattle and Bellevue and all neighborhoods around those two big cities. So stay tuned with me and let's begin. Nobody wants to buy houses when houses depreciated. Are you guys remember 2008? A lot of questions I have every single day from buyers because they have two biggest fears. Not pay too much and not miss anything. And everybody looking for best possible opportunity to buy or sell property to get top dollar from the house. Those questions are receiving every single day and I'm going to be cover a lot of topics in this episode where market is moving. If you guys go on Google and, and type 30 years mortgage rate for 30 years fixed mortgages, you guys can see interest rate approximately 6% depending on the day with um, perfect credit score and 20% down payment. And, uh, but that's not actually true. So you guys should know the mortgage rates depends on what kind of mortgage you're going to get. And this data shows online for mostly for confirming loan uh, limits. So confirming loans, loans secured by the government agencies like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and those loans have limits and different counties, different limits. Uh, in King County, it's almost up to $900,000 limit. And above that, you cannot get confirming loan. So what people do uh, to buy a property with a higher loan limit than $900,000, they get jumbo loan. And jumbo loan have totally different rates. Most brokers doesn't talk about that, but that's a big difference in the rates and big deal actually for the buyers because buyers should aware about that. I have clients, for example, a lock mortgage rate for jumbo loan just a week ago and rate was below 4.5%, so less than 4.5%. On today's market where everybody else providing rates like about 5.5, 5.75 with all perfect situation for the client. What that means is if you guys get higher loan amount, higher loan go to big banks like private investors like Chase Bank, US Bank, uh, PNC Bank, those investors uh, operate with own money and they decide what mortgage rates are going to give it to you. It's not up to the mortgage broker, it's banks that make decisions and they make own rates for anybody they want. Rates can be different. I see from 4% all the way to 6%. If you buy a property in east side like Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond, so and you put 20% down payment for 1.7, it's about $340,000, you guys in a jumbo loan limits, you're not in conformity. So your rate is not going to be 6% like you see online. Your rate is going to be much less and payment going to be much less. So those houses become more affordable for the people because they have higher loan limits. That's very important. But now let's jump into the local market and see what's happening in Seattle and Eastside. And I will start this time with Seattle areas. And you guys can see with me on the screen right now, the medium sell price in Seattle in May, it's $1,019,950. So it's over $1 million medium sell price, not for new construction, for any house. That's a medium sell price right now in Seattle. And we have about 0 0.6 months inventory, similar to last month, with slightly less pending sales, about 801 pending sales and 442 active listings, so less active listings on the market comparable to the last month. Percentage of homes in Seattle sold about asking price about 74% and 30% of all homes sold at asking price. And 91% of all homes in Seattle sold less than 15 days on the market. Of course, with that, odds of selling in Seattle is very high. It's about 91% and only 5% of all homes did not close after signing mutual agreement. So what kind of homes is that? Those homes when the buyers have contingency, contingency on financing or inspections, or maybe they didn't deposit the earnest money on time, those contracts fell apart and those contracts did not close. This contains about 5% last month in sealed areas. For data available on active listings on the market in Seattle, 
and compare for last 10 years what's happening in Seattle, you guys can see we had 442 listings available in months of April in 2022, comparable to 613 listings in uh, 2021. Uh, in 2020, we have even more listings. We have 709 listings. In 2019, it was over 1,000 listings on the market. This is interesting stats. Like you guys can see the uh, listings, number of listings shrinking in Seattle. Uh, I think because of many people decide not to sell or affordability issue, it uh, becomes a big problem for a lot of sellers because even if they sell property, what they going to buy if they're looking with the same location. And now my friends, let's look data for sales east side. On this side, guys, you see right now we have medium sell price one million seven hundred twenty-two thousand five hundred dollars. So it's over one point seven million dollars. It's a medium sell price for the house. Again, not new construction. It's average house, medium sell price for three bedroom, two bathroom home near Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond, Woodland, Isikwa, Samamish. Those cities uh, contain sales east side and uh, this is price is pretty pretty steep right now we do have 0 0.7 months of inventory on the market and uh, with 752 pending sales and you guys can see inventory actually changing from months ago well, months ago we had inventory 0 0.4 months and uh, if you compare it to a year ago a year ago same time we have inventory 0.4 months so right now 0.7 months it's a it's a big changes so we have more homes available in the market and i see changing interest rates reflect for people to actually start selling properties who was on edge sell or not to sell uh, i think it's a probably the best time already passed to sell property best time probably was march and april 2022 with higher inventory more listings on the market there will be more competition to the seller to sell the home but still seller's market because we have less than two months inventory in the market but we may jump to two months inventory very very soon it's possibly can happen end of the may and beginning of the june 80 percent of all homes in uh, sales east side selling above asking price with nine percent selling at asking price and 95 percent 95.5 so 96 percent of all homes in sales east side selling less than 15 days on the market so pretty much right now everybody who lives the house have a chance to sell fairly quickly and of course with that guys odds of selling is very high 88 percent and only three percent of all homes after signing mutual agreements did not close transactions so those contracts fell apart after signing mutual agreement. I want to show you guys also the very, very important data, supply and demand, supply, how many, how many active listings we have on the market in April. And on, in Seattle's east side, we have 533 listings. And if you guys compare to a year ago, it was the same time right now, 309 listings. So we have more listings this year, more people uh, desire to sell property in Seattle's east side. And I think it's because higher price, they have a lot of equity in the property and now they can sell property they can buy a lot of house for this equity in different states do you guys remember 2018 price correction when prices increased from 2015 to 2018 about 46 percent on this side and it's approximately 307 thousand dollars and mortgage rate also increased at the same time from 3.98 to 4.57 it's very hard to predict the market what's going to be happening it took about 17 months to rebound the market from october 2018 almost to february 2020 to get prices increases again At that time prices was dropped approximately about 10 percent 10 percent drop was from 977 thousand dollars to 885 thousand dollars and uh, if you guys Take this data and adjust to today's day, today's market, 2022. If you're going to have 10% price adjustments on $1,700,000 price take on this side, it's about $172,000 
price uh, adjustments. And the pulses on the market right now for 1.7, 1.75, probably going to be sell in near future for 1.55. So if we're going to have this price adjustments and uh, probably gonna take some time to uh, get to this balance market and adjust prices and uh, we're going to see probably another increase but probably in the next couple of couple of years. So that's what's going to be happen uh, with real estate market but it's really really difficult to predict what's going to be happening with today but because a lot of stuff is happening like war in ukraine in europe uh, stock market is crashed dramatically and uh, new constructions just starting right now too so a lot of factors uh, relate to the real estate market and more closer we're gonna get to end of 2022 more clearly we're going to see, see what's going to be happening in 2023 in close couple of years but as of today we have right now seller's market with a dramatically increasing inventory and increasing buyer's power in probably the next couple of the months and buyers going to have a lot of choices to buy and what will be my advice for buyers if you are a buyer looking to buy a property in this changing market for buyers it's a good news because we have more inventory and we slowly move into the balance market you guys should remember the balance market when we have two or more months in inventory we're not there yet right now we still have 0.7 months in inventory on the east side a 0.6 months in inventory in seattle area but we slowly going that directions and if you're a buyer and you're looking to buy the property uh, if you get an, a jumbo loan you're still gonna get probably good interest rate approximately between four and five percent right now but if you're looking for confirmation loan limits interest rates will be depends on what kind of mortgage you're going to get so my advice do not get serious fixed rate uh, if you would get confirmed loan because rates are very high right now it's about six percent get 3.5 percent or four percent if you get a loan for five years arm or ten years arm or three years arm and why i'm telling you guys that because uh, what is important to understand rates in general right now is very high Fed try to beat inflation. They try to increase rates to reduce buyer's power from many company investors. And uh, because money has become very, very cheap. 40% of the money was printed for last three years. And that's a lot of money on the hands right now. So the Fed try to increase rates to decrease buyer power. And as soon as we beat inflation and get to the normal mark, like between two and 3%, and I believe that's going to be happen, if not next year, but it's definitely going to be happening within five years and maximum 10 years, we're going to be beat inflation and mortgage rates going to be come back like it used to be before, between three to 4%. So you're going to have a chance to refinance again and keep your low mortgage payment for the property if you follow my advice. If you're choosing to buy a house, the number one, you have to like the location. You have to like the property. Because these locations you're going to be spend every day. That's location your kids going to be play outside with other kids. Location, location, it's very important. The location was always a key in real estate. Also, this house has to be affordable for you guys. It has to be comfortable mortgage payments, has to make sense to buy it. And you have to plan to live there at least for six years, for some time. If you looking to buy a house and planning to move in one year, not to buy a house. It's a bad time to buy a house right now. But if you guys looking to stay at least for six years, it's a good time to buy a house because real estate is a great investment and have a lot of tax benefits and right doves. If you're a seller and planning to sell your property in this changing market, my advice for you guys will be, if you're planning to sell, do not look on your neighbor house how much they sold it for because it might be sold it months ago when it was best time probably to sell the property. And in changing market, you have to attract buyers for this property with changing mortgage rates and you need to list for a little bit lower. So if you want to compete, get competition and create competition for your property, you probably should list 20% uh, lower than the market value and this is going to be create a lot of competition for the property and property probably going to be sell for much higher but if you uh, doesn't want to go that aggressive you can list property for less a little bit less you should not expect a lot of offers for the property you might end up selling at asking price or less and that's okay in changing market 
and also uh, you're not going to be able to see a lot of buyers walking through the home right now with increasing of interest rate and you guys have to understand this if you're planning to sell property and bring property in the market in second uh, half of 2022 prepare house for the market staging small repairs if those stuff you guys can do with help of your real estate broker so it's going to be great for you guys and also if you need my help see my number on the screen reach out to me i would love to be a real estate resource uh, with my 22 years of experience in selling houses uh, in not just houses and real estate in washington state i can help you a lot with a lot of different advices so that guys thank you so much for being with me uh, thank you so much for watching this video till the end and if you like it smash like button subscribe to my youtube channel you see my number on the screen uh, call me text me email me i would love to help you guys with any needs you have in washington state and have a fantastic week Till next market update in June.